Hello, welcome to Stitch and Witch. So I want to talk to you about my sweater, um, which I found like three different pronunciations for and I don't know if I'm saying it right. I think it's Ishel, it might be Ixel. I found a bunch of different, but I did find one person who like specialized in Mayan history who pronounced it Ishel. So I'm gonna go with that for now. But anyway, this is my actual sweater or e-shell sweater and I finished it a couple of months ago but I hadn't had a chance to sit down and record. I want to talk a little bit about the experience of knitting this sweater, what I learned from it, um, what I hated about it, and uh, a couple things that went wrong. And I kind of want to do this more often with the more complicated patterns that I do like this. I think it's helpful if you're sitting down you're about to do a pattern and you're like, oh gosh. I'm really struggling here. Um, I think it's helpful to have that. But first, I'm gonna take it off because this room is really warm in the evenings. The sun sets on that side of the house and it's really hot through these windows. So I'm gonna take it off and then I'll talk. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so the Ishel sweater. Um, I, like the whole rest of the knitting world, fell in love with this sweater when Pom Pom first put up the, uh, um, their cover art and showed it uh, and it was, it's like blue and gold in that. I'm a really big fan of blue and silver. Um, so I did it in the blue and silver. Um, I use Knit Picks, Hawthorne yarn, and, uh, so it's 100% wool. It's the only fingering weight adult size sweater I have yet made. Um, this was the first. And I absolutely love this, how it looks. So my first issue with this was I cast it on <laughs> like 14 times. I don't know. I cast it on a lot of times before I actually continued past the collar. I kept getting the collar and then the short rows done and then looking at it and feeling like it wasn't quite right. And even still, I think I should have gone down one size. I think I did it in the 46, I think I did it in the 46 inch. Yeah, I think I did it in the 46 inch, um, which fit me every time I tried it on it's top down so I tried it on numerous times while I was knitting it it fit me every time I tried it on right up until I blocked it so I I blocked it I wet blocked it I got it all wet I dried it I wrapped it in a towel I squeezed it out I laid it out actually in this room because we weren't really using this room for much at the time um I laid it out flat and I didn't think about what I was doing and I just kind of laid it out as far as it would lay out. I swear to God, this was not my first time blocking. I don't know what went wrong with me that day. I just wasn't, I just wasn't thinking. So I laid it out and when I came back in like the next day and it was dry and I picked it up, the sleeves were like seven inches too long for my arms. And I burst into tears because I, I, didn't know what to do. I did a bunch of research online. I talked to a couple people and I found that there really is no solution for that. And I was like, okay, wait, it's not quite completely dry. Maybe I can fix it. So I blocked it a second time and I kind of scrunched up the sleeves a little bit and um, it didn't, it's still a little bit too big. It's a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. It's not too big. I can wear it. I mean, you just saw me wearing it. I can wear it, but it's a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be when I made it. I have no dexterity with my left hand, so I knit, I knit, um, I just forgot what it's called. I, did, I knit English style, so I don't knit continental. I can't, I can't keep tension in my left hand, which is also why I don't crochet very often. Um, something about the way that my fingers work or my wrist, I don't know, but I just, I have no dexterity with that. I've done it, I've tried it a thousand times. It just does not ever I mean, they say if you keep practicing, you get better at it that way. And I've done it so many times and it just doesn't work. This one just, it took me forever. Um, so let me talk about things I wasn't sure of. Some of this is just like my inexperience with color work. Like right around the edges of the moons here. Like I, I wasn't sure if I should carry the silver all the way around when the blue ended. Um, I ended up not carrying the silver. And if you look close, so see how this is like kind of pulling right here? I kind of had that problem on both sides of that section where the silver would kind of pull in and I'm sure there's some trick and maybe somebody can tell me what it is to make that not happen 
Um, I tried wrapping it at the edges. I tried a whole bunch uh, of things. The other thing is, is that there's quite a few times where you're doing this like single row down the arrow here. And you're doing blue all the way around and just that there. And every time I did, I felt like I was getting some sort of weird twisted stitch. So again, I tried to like wrap it a couple stitches ahead um, to keep that from happening. But it still happened a little bit more than I would have liked. Uh, so that it didn't quite lay flat in those places. Regardless, I think that this pattern is just undeniably gorgeous. Um, it's absolutely one of the most beautiful knitting patterns I've ever seen. And I... I'm very proud of this sweater, even with its little flaws that I know that I can pick out and point out to anybody who asks. What are you doing? I was going to make a little video of that, but now you're sitting on it. You're very cute. Can I have my sweater back? Winter. Winter, I want to stand up. I see your ears moving. I know you hear me. Winter. Winter, I want to stand up. Excuse me. I see your eyes open. Can we get up now? <laughs> 